guess when I bring Doug, my boa constrictor, to programs at like libraries or whatever, he often sits relaxed in kind of this S curve. And I often have people approach me telling me to watch out. He's in an S curve. He's about to strike you. When in all actuality, I know that he's not going to strike. So today we're going to be talking about how to read the body language of your snake. important to know the individual quirks of your snake species at home. The body language we're going to be covering in today's video will be more generalized to um, the majority of snakes, but again, yours at home might be a little bit different. We're going to start with the body language of a happy or relaxed snake, and then throughout the video we'll move towards the body language of a snake that is kind of stressed or acting defensively. So we'll begin with a snake that is very relaxed. Signs of a snake that is very relaxed include holding their body in a way that isn't tensed up at all. The snake also might be curled up or resting its head on a coil of its body. And it's not really looking at you in particular, it's just kind of sitting there and has very few, if any, tongue flicks. It's hard to tell when a snake is sleeping because they can't blink their eyes, so they sleep with their eyes open. But if your snake is in a safe place, like in its cave, it's curled up, it's not moving at all, and it's not tongue flicking at all, there's a good chance that it might be asleep. And if it's not asleep, like it's moving just a teeny bit, but not really any tongue flicks, it's most likely just very relaxed. Now let's talk about snakes that are just curious or inquisitive or exploring. They're not stressed at all, it's just a snake that's checking out their surroundings like Doug right here. This includes some tongue flicking, not a ton of it, just like a, a, a normal rate, which is hard to describe, but it, once you own snakes for a while, you'll kind of know what a normal rate is when it comes to tongue flicks, as well as how long the tongue flicks are. If there's something of particular interest around the snake that it's trying to investigate a little bit more, it'll take its tongue and actually curve it in the direction of whatever is interesting to them. So instead of our just really relaxed snakes that are just kind of laying there, a curious or uh, an inquisitive snake will be moving around. It's basically checking, again, checking out its surroundings, but it's not focusing its attention on one specific thing. It's just generally looking all around itself. There are, of course, some exceptions to this, as there are with anything. Say, uh, for example, our bull snake Janet, our very, my very first snake, he would take like 10 minutes out of his day and just smell. He would tongue flick a stick in his enclosure for about 10 minutes. He didn't think it was food or anything. He just wanted to check it out and see what that stick was. I guess it was just particularly interesting to him. So again, the um, signs or body language of a curious snake can vary based on individual. By the way, if you haven't seen Doug on the channel before, he is my common boa constrictor and he goes to all of the programs with me at libraries and schools and scouts. So even though he might be sitting in like, here I'll move him, he's very friendly. Even though he might be sitting in this S curve, I know based on reading the rest of his body language that he's not in a strike position. I mean, this guy isn't head shy. He is fantastic. So I, uh, he and I are very close. We've been working together for many years. All right, this is Hannah, one of our bull snakes. She is our, uh, probably our friendliest bull snake that I use in programs, so I'm just gonna have her with me for this. Well, let's talk about body language of a hungry snake, like feeding behavior, feeding movements. Snakes that are hungry will act in a way that they're moving around, but it looks like they're on a mission to get to something. They'll almost lock eyes with you or something that moves past, that catches their interest, that they think could potentially be food. Or they have just learned to associate you with providing them with food, so they follow you around when they're hungry. This is also accompanied by very quick moving and frequent tongue flicks, because they are trying to investigate that food item and determine whether or not it's food. And again, if the food is off to one direction or the other, they will flick their tongue in the direction of the food. They may even go so far as to intensely stare at you or whatever is of interest to them that they think could be food with those quick tongue flicks and they'll follow it. Like if you take a mouse that they want, they'll follow it around their head because they are really interested in eating that. Let's take a look at this in person. We're going to put Hannah in this little container. Bull snakes are great at showing off feeding behavior because they love to eat. All right, we have our mouse, and this is a very, very small meal for her. I actually need her to be a little bit hungry to eat at a program tomorrow. So this is all you're getting today. Check this out, though. I'll turn her. Oh, I thought I was going to turn her. 
Okay, so see how much more alert she's become? She has learned to associate being put in a bin at my shows with being fed. So she is immediately perked up and more active. She's flicking her tongue more frequently. And watch how that increases even more and her attention focuses even more when she realizes there's food. See her following it around? Curving her tongue. She's following it, following it. Lots of quick tongue flicks. And then if I were to give it to her, oh, got to check it out a little more. There we go. So it was kind of neat seeing that behavior change almost instantly when we put her in this container. Now I know there's a big controversy on feeding your snake in a separate enclosure versus its habitat. Today isn't the day to discuss that. Let's move on to more scared or defensive body language found in snakes. Okay, for snakes that are exhibiting scared or threatened body language, they will often try to shy away or tuck away from something that's scaring them. This is often seen in ball pythons that are head shy, like she goes to my programs too, so she's not very head shy either. Oh, that's right, I was holding the mouse in that hand. Probably shouldn't do it with that hand. No, Here. probably not. So like, she's not really doing it because she's not head shy, but ball pythons will usually, if you touch anywhere near their head, they'll tuck it back because they're, they don't like to be touched in the face. Some snakes, instead of shying away from a threat, will try to get away from you altogether and will quickly slither away from you. So if you're reaching into your snake's enclosure and the snake takes off in the other direction, he probably thinks you're a predator and he is scared of you. Some snakes may, if they feel cornered, like if you're reaching into your corn snake's enclosure and you lift up their cave, they might just freeze and they're hoping that you don't see them and you leave them alone. And if they are feeling quite stressed, you'll also notice that their tongue flicks are very long. Like they take a long time to pull the tongue back into their mouth. That's because they're trying to pick up as much of the scent around them as possible before drawing it in and then processing it in their Jacobson's organ. This, by the way, is Martha. She is my foster fail of all python. We were supposed to foster her until she found a new home because she was part of our rescue group that we work with. And then I fell in love with her because she's so friendly and now she joins me at my programs too. As you can see, she is not actually showing any signs of being stressed. I was hoping she'd tuck her head back a little to show you what that means, but she's just too chill. Instead, she's just kind of looking all around. She's not focused on anything in particular. She has these normal uh, duration tongue flicks that are just coming out at a normal rate and a normal, or a, sorry, a normal length of time and a normal frequency. And she's just comfortable at the moment and happy as can be sitting in my hand. If a snake feels cornered to the point where they know they can't escape, that's when they will start exhibiting their various defense mechanisms, which do vary based on species. So this is where it's particularly important to know the behavior of the species that you're keeping because some will do something different than another species will. The hognose snake is one that's very well known for its dramatic defense mechanisms. So they make an, ex an excellent example for this. The hognose, when it's feeling threatened, will stretch out the skin on the sides of its neck. It'll hood up, we call it. And basically what the hognose snake is doing is it's trying to look bigger than it actually is to try to intimidate you to make you leave it alone. They do this with people, they do it with predators, this is their base, their, their first option for their defense mechanism. So if you see a hognose snake that's hooding up, you don't really want to egg it on because that means it's stressed. It thinks you're a predator that's going to eat it or attack it. Hognose snakes that are hooded up will then often bluff strike at a predator or a threat that gets too close to them. This basically means that they keep their mouth closed, but they strike at the threat. So basically they just kind of boop you with their nose or the side of their face, and they're trying to scare you that much more with that quick movement and a little bit of a hiss to try to get you to leave them alone. Speaking of hissing, the hognose snake's noise when it's striking isn't actually a hiss from its mouth. Instead, these guys have a very unique rostral scale, which is the scale uh, right in front of their nose. It's pushed up, even in their skeleton. You can see it, that bone pushed up, and that allows them to make a very loud noise when they exhale through their nose. So what they'll do is they'll, let me rewind, they will bluff strike, they will quickly jerk their body, they breathe out, or they exhale quickly through their nose to make a hissing sound, and they hope that scares you away. So if you have a hognose snake that is acting in this manner defensively, you don't want to like reach in and pull out because they strike or they bluff strike at you and then reach in again and pull out again because in their eyes, you look like a predator, say a bird that is swooping down and getting scared away and then coming back down and trying to attack them again and flying away. You don't wanna look like a predator to them. You want to reach in confidently and with one swift motion, pick them up, remove them from their enclosure and 90 
99% of the time, after you remove a, a, an upset hognose snake from their enclosure, they calm right down and they're perfectly handleable afterwards. They realize that if you were a predator, you would have eaten them by now, and instead you're still holding them, so you're not really a threat anymore. Most often, when you hold them for a couple minutes, they revert back to that curious and explorative mode that we were talking about earlier, like she is right now. She was pretty defensive when I first took her out of the enclosure, but now that she's been out for just a couple minutes, she's perfectly fine. There's one more thing, even more dramatic, that hognose snakes will do when they're feeling extremely threatened. And I know we're talking a lot about hognose snakes here, I'm sorry, they're just so unique in their defense mechanisms that <laughs> we can't ignore this. When they're feeling extremely threatened, they will stop the whole hood up thing. They don't want to look threatening anymore. They take the opposite route and they'll roll over onto their backs, open up their mouths, stick out their tongue, and they'll play dead. They think they're dead, they'll wiggle around, they'll poop on themselves, they might even regurgitate a previous meal, or they can, on purpose, pop a blood vessel in their mouth and bleed from their mouth on purpose. So what they're doing now is, instead of trying to scare you away, they try to make you think they are as gross and as unappetizing as possible that you would get sick if you continued to mess with them, so instead you should just leave them alone. Now this does mean that if a hognose snake plays dead, it is almost accepting its fate. That's its last resort. It is terrified. So really, even though there's cute pictures out there of hognose snakes playing dead and we think it's adorable, that snake is so scared. It's not as cute as you might originally think because that snake is terrified. So you don't want to prod a hognose snake to the point where it plays dead because it thinks you're seriously going to eat it. Ed and I don't see our adult hognose snakes playing dead at all. They'll hood up from time to time just because they have a bit of a sassy attitude, but we very rarely see them play dead. We actually only see them play dead when they are newly hatched babies that have just come out of the egg. They see us for the first time. They don't know what humans are, so they die. So we take a couple pictures of our dead, defective hognose snakes because it's too cute to resist, but then we leave them alone, we let them come back to life, and then we work with them over time, which usually doesn't take very long, and they soon realize that we are not predators. Before I put her back, this is Charlotte. She is our twin spot albino morph hognose snake. She will be big enough to breed next year, actually, so we're really excited to breed her. We just need to find the right male that is either albino or het albino, preferably a twin spot, so we can create more of those, and we'll be set for next year's breeding season. Maybe we'll get one at Tinley, who knows. There we go. Hognose snakes aren't the only snake that will puff up their cheeks or try to flatten their head when they're scared. There are many other species of colubrids that do that too, one being bull snakes. These will flatten out their head to make it look more like an arrow shape, and this could be a form of bait scene mimicry, where they are mimicking the look of a harmful species like the rattlesnakes, even though the bull snake is harmless. You can learn all about mimicry and camouflage in a video where we go more in depth about it right here. But um, another snake that'll do this would be like garter snakes. They'll flatten their head out too. So it's a pretty common defense mechanism. But what bull snakes are more well known for as far as their stressed out body language goes is the vibrating of their tail. They'll take their tail, they vibrate it in or near whatever is close to them, and they make a, a, a rattling noise to, again, mimic a rattlesnake. Bull snakes also have a unique structure in front of their glottis, which is the opening in their mouth that they breathe out of. But in front of the glottis, the snakes in the genus Pituophis, which include the bull snakes, so gopher snakes, uh, since bull snakes are just a type of gopher snake, as well as pine snakes, they have in front of their glottis, or airway, an epiglottis, which is a specialized piece of cartilage that divides the airway into two and basically allows them to hiss twice as loud as other snakes, so they can be really loud. So in the reptile world, or at least with snakes, if they're scared, they oftentimes try to either look intimidating or sound intimidating. So we've kind of made the point that a lot of snakes will contort their bodies in different ways when they feel scared to try to make themselves look more threatening to you so that you leave them alone. Another great example of that would be with the false water cobra. These will not only stretch out this extra stretchy skin along the sides of their neck to mimic a true water cobra, but in addition to that, they will flatten out the rest of their body. They flatten out 
more horizontally so they look like better almost. And this helps them look big and scary and it actually makes them look almost twice the size that they actually are. Whereas Blue Beauty rat snakes, along with most other old world rat snakes, will flatten out their bodies more vertically. Another sign that a snake is a bit stressed out is that it will kind of lock on to whatever is scaring it and it'll follow it around. See him following me? He's not sure whether he wants to look at my face or my hand here, but he's definitely a little bit stressed. We're actually working with these guys so that they calm down a little bit with handling. They usually don't bite the hand that's holding them, but these guys, these new snakes, are like an exception we've found. Like, they'll almost bite my hand. But it's still a really good example of their unique defense mechanism and their stressed out body language and posture. Yeah, now you can really see how vertically stretched he is. So this is the well-known S-curve or strike position that snakes will display. But unlike Doug at the beginning, this beauty snake's posture is much more tense than relaxed. Right before, nope, we're not gonna look down there. Let's look up here, thank you, let's not bite my hand. The S-curve or the strike position is basically the snake winding itself up so that it can spring out and strike if it feels threatened. Let's see if I can have him strike here so you can see the spring load in action. Oh, mouth open too. That's another sign of a very angry snake is mouth open. There we go. Just like that. So they kind of spring load themselves. And that's of course the bite that we call, oh, don't bite me, that we call a tag where they just bite and let go. It's mostly just a, a warning bite. Notice the other bits of body language we talked about earlier um, playing a role in here. He's doing, he's locking on, he is rattling his tail. He is not breaking eye contact with my hand because that's stress or that's what's uh, threatening him right now. But he hasn't so far bit the hand that's holding him, which I'm very happy about. Another thing we've noticed is that even the tail rattle can vary based on species. A lot of our North American colubrids we've noticed will buzz just the end of their tail and they will do a constant rattle. Whereas these old world rat snakes, like maybe it's just these blue beauties, they'll take their entire tail, which is quite long, and they buzz it in pulses. They do a quick buzz, and then they pause, and then they do another little buzz, and then they pause. They have such long tails, they got a lot to buzz. That's true. So another sign of a snake getting close to biting is uh, snakes will, if it's a feeding response, they will flick their tongue very closely to what they want to grab onto right before they open their mouth. So if a snake seems really interested in your arm and they're flicking their tongue at it and like almost pushing their nose into it, they might be opening their mouth kind of soon as a feeding response. So that's why it's important to wash your hands after handling rodents so that you don't smell like their food. Because usually that's what happens is they're just tricked into thinking that you're their food. We decided to put the beauty snake back because we don't want him to get too stressed out. We're still working with him to become more handleable um, and we just wanted to give him a break. So we have the false water cobra out again. This is Roger, by the way. He was our first false water cobra and he is the reason why I love them so much because he's so friendly. He's amazing. We raised him from just a little hatchling. So hopefully today's video about body language has helped you learn a little bit more about the behavior of your snake at home and what they're feeling based on how often and and how long their tongue flakes are, what they're looking at, and how they're holding their body and how tense they are, you can generally get a good idea of how they're feeling by looking at those variables. The most important thing though is that you need to learn the behavior of your personal snake at home and once you get to know what normal behavior is for your snake, how it holds itself, where it looks around, how it looks around and explores, then when it starts acting differently, you can learn why it's acting differently. Whether it means it's hungry or it's agitated, it's preparing for a shed, and once you learn all of that, you'll have a much stronger relationship with your pet snake because you'll know how to read his body language. So I'd like to thank you for watching today's video about snake body language. Hopefully it taught you something new. As always, thank you to our Patreon supporters for backing this channel. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we appreciate those who are just watching for fun. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you next time. One of the baby bull snakes from the bread and peanut clutch is so sassy. I have never seen one with this big of an attitude before. She flattens her head so much that it repositions the epiglottis and actually changes the sound of her hiss to a deep, almost like a honking sound.
It's not an upper respiratory infection. It turns out she just gets so worked up that it affects the sound of her hiss. We've named her Ducky and we love her anyway and we're just gonna hang on to her and work with her until she's calm enough to go to a new home, if that happens.